Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be a little bit of a metagame discussion video because honestly, I'm just really confused in terms of how the state of the community in general is towards the entire thing regarding Zodiac Beasts. Now, I should get this out of the way right now. I'm personally a big fan of the Zodiac Beast cards. I love them to death because of exactly what they allowed this game to go back into, which is basically an era of Yu-Gi-Oh that we haven't been in for a long time, and that is a very skillful, very resource-based game of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is something that's kind of been lost over the past couple of years. But essentially, what I see over and over again in Facebook groups, in comment sections, in any form of social medium where people are allowed to express their thoughts I see nothing but just this overwhelming amount of hatred towards the Zodiac Beast archetype and the Zodiac Beast deck in general. And I just, I don't understand. I cannot, for the life of me, understand why people are just absolutely, it's almost to the point of fake hate because there's so much of it. There's no way that this many of the people in the community absolutely hate this archetype and the progression of the game in this way. There's no way it has to be fake at some point, because we have not gotten anything on this scope of hatred for something in, like, ever. It's been so long since we've gotten this amount of hatred for something, to the point where OCG card stores have banned Zodiac cards from being played in their casual tournaments. Of course, they can't do anything about the actual sanctioned tournaments, but casual tournaments at, at like, at... <laughs> Japanese stores, the Japanese locals, they banned Zodiac Beast cards for a certain period of time just because of how much people did not like them. And I don't understand. And this is coming from someone who understands that the Zodiac stuff is probably a bit excessive in terms of how it operates, but it's also incredibly fair. It's also so fair, and it's also just a huge, huge like asset towards diversification of the format. Simply because of how absolutely small the Zodiac Beast engine actually is. You can play as few as three Momorats if you want to, or excuse me, three Rat Piers, or you can extend the engine to about 12 or 15 cards. It literally is the most flexible engine and the most compact engine I've ever seen that almost any deck can utilize. So I don't really understand all of this. What I'm going to continue to refer to is fake hate towards it because literally everywhere, on my own videos, on other people's videos, in Facebook groups, everywhere, people are like, eh, Zodiac Beasts again, eh, da, 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 da. how very creative. Meanwhile, these are the same people that I'll see that are like, oh man, look at my amazing fucking Battery Man Turbo deck, or look at my amazing, like, Gym Knight deck or something. Meanwhile, these are decks that you could play Zodiac Beasts in and actually have a better chance of succeeding. It's almost like you'd rather see the deck that you love actually not perform rather than to basically add Zodiac Beast cards to it. Now, I can kind of understand like where some people might be coming from as far as pricing on Zodiac Beast cards, but like it's it's basically like you are going to invest in what you enjoy doing. Um, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I love the Zodiac Beast engine. I'm going to invest whatever I need to invest in to get them. If I'm going to be playtesting for an event, and there are Zodiac Beast cards in my deck, and I do not own Zodiac Beast cards, come hell or high water, by the time that event comes around, I'm trying to win this event, there will be Zodiac cards in my deck. Whether I have to borrow them, buy them, lease them, whatever. They're going to be in my deck, and that's sort of a mindset I don't see people really, like, want to, like, partake in, which I don't quite get, like, either. There's just tons of points in this video that I'm probably going to be discussing that are just points that I just do not understand, how the community is so twisted in mindset compared to what I would consider to be a very reasonable mindset to have of one if you're playing online play test everything don't get mad at somebody for playing Zodiac Beasts and don't get mad at other people for recommending you to play Zodiac Beasts if you're one if you exclusively play online all the resources are free to you test Zodiac Beasts for God's sake like I can understand how some people, like going back to my previous point, I can understand how some people do not like Zodiac Beasts of the aspect of price, but you have to understand that it is, it is one of the most splashable engines that we've ever had in the game's history. In fact, it may be the most splashable engine that we've ever had in terms of how potent it is and what it does for different decks, because it gives you a defensive line, it gives you recursion, it gives you 
a offense and recursion. Like, it gives you so much. It gives you offense, defense, and recursion all in one compact engine. And the most strenuous part about your deck building exercises to incorporate it is incorporating cards into your extra deck. You don't even really have to worry about main decking, like extenuous amounts of Zodiac Beast cards because you can usually find some way to implement them in the least invasive way possible. Like I said, you can either play just three Rat Pierre, or you can go and you can add other things to the engine, like Terra Tops, Taka Tomborg, Barrages. You get to play it at your own pace. The only thing that is mandatory is that you have to find between five and seven extra deck slots in order to play the Zodiac Beast engine in your deck. And if you're somewhat decent at understanding how deck building operates, you will be able to cut fat out of your extra deck in terms of you'll be looking at cards and you'll be playing these cards for literally months if you've been playing the deck that you're playing for any amount of time. You'll be playing these cards that you literally summon one out of every like 100 games and you'll justify that as being a non-cuttable card. Just because you make it one out of every 100 games and that one out of every 100 games when it comes up that it's kind of alright. But you can then actually go and cut these cards for cards that you're making every game, and every game they're amazing, and then you all of a sudden start getting into a mindset of understanding that, oh yeah, my, my extra deck that I think only has one flexible spot in it actually has maybe like five, six, or seven flexible spots. That's something I've done for a ton of decks that I was guilty of that mindset of being in. I was guilty of being in that mindset of thinking I could not cut cards in these extra decks, but then I started actually playing and realizing I literally never make these cards. Except for once in like a fortnight and then I would be able to just start being like, okay, I can cut this. All right, let's start fitting more things in. And through that process of elimination, good deck builders will be able to fit the Zodiac Beast engine in the extra deck into almost anything that's capable. Now, there are going to be some decks that are absolutely not flexible with extra decks. One that I'd probably think of as a good example is probably like DDD, because that, whoa, like you actually just make almost every card in that extra deck. But that's just a flaw in that deck's design that makes it to where it doesn't find itself compatible with Zodiac Beasts. But almost every other deck in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is capable of this. So you can definitely fit it into literally any deck. The only big problem is the price. Now, as far as what Zodiac Beasts do, Drynant is not unfair. Literally, there are four exceeds printed that you go through in the turn that you make your play. You go through all four of these exceeds, and you're only using two effects off of them. You're using the Broad Bull Search, and you're using the Dryden Pop. Like, all four of these exceeds monsters are actually incredibly, like, watered down in terms of effect-wise. They had to be, or else it would be incredibly unfair for the game compared, like, like even paired up with, with, uh, with Rat Pierre. Like, it... It just wouldn't be something that'd be viable on a printing basis. Like, it would have been flagged in R&D immediately. But the Zodiac Beast engine, for what it does, is incredibly fair compared to what we've been dealing with over the past literal year before their release. I mean, think about it. You're making a Dryden and a Rank 4 every turn. Neat. Wow. A Dryden that can only pop face-up cards. They can be easily played around by Kaiju's Book of Moon. Things... There are cards that have literally not been playable in the game for years because they've sucked in comparison to everything else that were power creeped out. Cards like Book of Moon and Torrential Tribute and stuff like that are now like staple cards in decks again because of how fair the Zodiac Beast deck actually is. It's just overwhelmingly consistent as an engine, which means that you can add that into any other deck that can support it, and then you increase that deck's consistency and ceiling by that much. I just don't quite get it. I don't understand the fake hate. I love Zodiac Beast. I put it in every deck that I can fit it in because it just makes everything have a one card starter play that allows it to have a crutch to lean on. Now, let's look at YCS Seattle. 30 out of the 32 top decks contained Zodiac Beast cards, but these were not 30 Zodiac decks. About uh, half of them were probably Zodiac Beast decks, if I remember correctly. It was like half or a little bit over half were either pure Zodiac, Zodiac Kaiju, or Zodiac Artifact. Where it's literally like, we're working with Zoo and nothing else. Just supporting cast members. But then, the other half of the top 32 that was containing Zoo cards were like individual decks that got individual top spots like Metal Foe Zodiac, Cosmo Zodiac, like... I don't understand, like, Infernoid gets to use it, like, there's, every deck can utilize Zodiac Beasts to an extent, and that's amazing, 
it's one of the most flexible engines I've ever seen. Like I've like I've said, it's and it's the thing. It's like it's it's actually just pushed decks out of the format, like Mermel and ABC and stuff like that, only due to its sheer consistency level. It's not even unfair. It, the stuff you're doing isn't unfair. You're making a rank four and a Dryden turn one, and then you're setting traps. The traps are the most unfair part of that scenario, and those have always existed. And people haven't been up in arms about it now. People loved their fucking demise decks of summer of 2016. And that was literally set traps to the deck. People have loved Paleozoics for the past like three or four months. And that was literally every trap in the game dot deck. Like, I don't quite understand. I need people to help me understand this. Because I'm coming from a place of... I looked at the Zodiac cards and I was like, yeah, these might be a problem. But then I played with them and I was like, wait, these can go in everything everything gets better literally a resource that is available to everyone to put in anything as far as decks are concerned is amazing the same argument i have on why elder entity norden is actually incredibly fair is like because you can put instant fusion and norden in any deck that can support it synchro decks exceeds decks anything zodiac beasts that's a one card starting play that gets you some resources to actually start your play lines moving in a deck it goes back to a point i made way back earlier in the video some people just seem like they would rather see their favorite deck not be able to complete, come like Pete in any way, rather than incorporate new cards into it and be like, oh, I don't want to play these cards. Nah, man, the Zodiac Beast, nah, man, I'm too cool for that. This deck's too good. Remember in 2011 when this deck was the best deck? It's 2017. It's time to wake up. It's time to start adapting. If you aren't willing to adapt, then you are not willing to advance. And if you are not willing to advance, you are not willing to improve. It's very simple. If you do not want to adapt, then you are not going to see too much success in this game. Because you're going to play that same deck that you've played since 2010, 2011. And you're going to go 0-3 drop at every event. And you're going to curse the Zodiac Beasts to the heavens. And you're going to shout at the sky outside like a manly man that you think that you are and it's just like why though you could have played zodiac beasts in this deck and it probably would have made it better hell when your regular play got stopped you could fall back on a one card play that puts your resources back off digusto emerald and gives you a defensive line in the form of dryden oh shit like i don't understand the thought processes that certain people have that are like really just feeding into this fake hate that i've seen and like it's everywhere i cannot escape it i don't understand why i don't understand how this has turned much more into a rant than it has been a discussion video but holy shit i need to figure this out i need to realize and understand literally you could play zoo in anything yes it's expensive it's an expensive engine but it's incredibly fair compared to what we've been dealing with since 2016. We had to deal with full power Pepe. We had to deal with Stormforth Erebus, Stormforth either, and that was incredibly stressful. We had to deal with multiple Beatrices that floated and did the exact same thing that Dryden did, but also could advance their game state. We had to deal with so many things. We've had to deal with ABC Dragon Buster, which is the closest comparison to Dryden that you can actually have, but it is a 3,000 body that floats into at least one possibly two rank fours on the following turn and then another copy of abc dragon buster whoa like and it banishes the card it banishes any card like comparing that to dryden is like comparing an absolutely horrendous occurrence to something incredibly mundane dryden it turns into another rank four and then that same dryden turns into a different dryden on the next turn neat so it's nowhere near as bad as something like ABC Dragon Buster was in terms of its effect on the game and all that sort of nonsense. But, especially considering that the cards you summon Dryden with are not floaters. The ABC monsters were floaters. So it was already even harder to deal with on top of that. But yet I didn't see nearly as many people raging about ABC as I do about Zodiacs. And the only thing I can think of that justifies this is that like the ABC deck was a $30 investment of starter decks. And then, with all the other stuff you had to add to it, depending on how in-depth you wanted to go into it down the road to build your deck, you probably spent about $200 on your ABC deck for the entirety of the thing. Whereas, Zodiac Beasts, right about now, for the engine, the full engine, including everything, Invoker, Teratops, Rats, Barrages, everything, all the exceeds everything, is 
around $450, somewhere in that range, for an engine that goes into your deck. I agree, that's a pretty insane price. But if you want to succeed, then you will find a way to invest in it into a way that does not break you. I had a conversation with a friend years ago who was in this game and is still in this game and is doing rather well because he's been using these things that I told him how to do. Because he played Cliff Horts forever because it was a cheap deck and it was like the middle of Necros format and he was still playing Cliff Horts. And he came to me and talked to me and asked me why he wasn't improving in terms of a player. I was like, well, you're playing Cliff Horts and you're not willing to branch out to other options. And he's like... Well, price is a problem. It's like, listen, if you have friends, the very last justification you should have for not playing a card to at least test it is that it costs too much. You should never justify not playing a card because it costs too much. That should be your very last justification. Because if you have friends, if you have people in the community that support you, even if it's just for playtesting purposes to improve your skill as a player, people can let you borrow them or you can proxy them if you're playtesting with friends. Or you can just play them online. There's so many different options. And so, basically, by telling him this information and giving him this sort of, like, ideal and way to, like, go about his improvement process, the very next week I saw him, he had borrowed an entire Burning Abyss deck and was like, yes, absolutely. Keep playing this. Figure out the intricacies. It'll definitely help you a lot more as you're playing any deck that you play if you understand how the other decks you're playing against work. It's, it's a very simple concept. Sure, if you don't like Zodiac Beasts, fine. I can understand that. If you don't like the price, fine. I can understand that. If you don't have people that are willing to help you out, fine. I can understand. Some people don't have the same luxuries as other people. But the very last justification you should have for not liking cards is because of price. You should save judgment on these cards until you've tried them out in your decks. And then, if you find that they're amazing but still can't afford them and can't find them, then that should be when your justification of, oh, they're too expensive, so fuck these cards happens. That should be the point at which price becomes a factor. Because you're limiting yourself in terms of what you're willing to broaden your mind to accept if you are basically shooting something down immediately because you're like, oh man, nah, I could test this card, it's great, but it's too much. Come on now. I don't understand. But anyway, this has been like an 18 minute long, basically, rant at this point. I want to know what all of you guys' opinions are in the comments down below. This video is probably going to get a shit ton of dislikes or something, because, I mean, shit. I basically literally just spent 18 minutes ranting on the on why Zodiac Beasts are great, and a lot of people just don't share that opinion, which, again, I would love, 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 love to know why. I would love to know why you think this, and, like, basically, I just want to encourage conversation. Tell me in the comments below. What you think about Zodiac Beasts, give me your honest opinion on how they affect other decks, how you think they mesh with other decks, all that sort of nonsense. Do not bring up price and let it, unless it's your last argument that you can give, other than, oh, these cards are awful or whatever, or if you don't like what they're doing to the game or whatever. I personally love what they've done to the game. They've turned the game back into a resource-based, skill-intensive format. This format is great to me because there's room for innovation, there's room for tons of things. I haven't had this much fun in Yu-Gi-Oh! in a format since Necros, because the format is so set in stone, you know what's going to happen, and then that means that you can then use what you know to innovate further and try to push the boundary even further. But anyway, like I've already said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any of you that got this far into the video, then definitely just give us a hashtag Zodiacs or hashtag Zodiac Life. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Hashtag Zodiac Life in the comments down below. If you made it this far, you are a legend if you made it this far. But anyway, other than that, like, comment, subscribe. Again, I'm super curious of opinions on this one. I want to understand because this is coming from someone who loves what Zodiac Beasts have done for this game. I would love to understand exactly why because I do not understand this, this like I said, seemingly fake hate. I don't get it. And this video might be incredibly unlike organized and all that, but it literally is just a rant at this point. So, I mean, I guess I'm just going to be doing this. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, as I've already said. Let me know your opinions in the comments down below. I'm going to stress this. I want opinions. I want to know what you guys think. But other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as always, guys, take care. Check out links in the description. All sort of nonsense. Bye.